What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to properly handle exceptions in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about professional exception handling in this video today. And exception handling is a very foundational topic. It's something that you learn about quite early in your programming journey. However, this video is not only for complete beginners, because I'm going to also explain some more advanced things. We're not going to just cover basic exception handling, like what's try, what's accept, what's an exception, how do you erase an exception, we're going to cover different ways in which we can handle exceptions and the ways in which we should handle exceptions, uh, according to the best practice guidelines. So for those of you who don't know anything about exceptions, exceptions are raised when something goes wrong. So for example, I can say print, 10 divided by zero, this is going to cause a so called zero division error because we cannot define by zero, uh, divide by zero. So you can see here zero division error, and my program crashes. What this exactly means is that the statement afterwards, if I say hello down here is not going to be executed anymore, because at this point, the program crashes, what I can do here is I can handle that exception, I can say, try this, try to execute this code. And in the case of an exception in this except block down here, I can do something. So for example, I can pr uh, print error occurred, division failed, but I don't want to crash the script. So I'm just going to print that message. And because of that, you can see that I reached that except block, but I still continue with the rest of the script because this exception, even though it's raised, doesn't cause the script to, uh, to crash because I handle it here in this except block. Now, if I change this to 10 divided by two, I'm not going to get that error message because that is a, uh, a possible division. So I get the result of the division instead of entering that block. That's the basics. Uh, those are the basics of exception handling. And now we have different ways and different best practices for exception handling. Now, one thing that you can do here, and this is not a best practice per se, but one thing that you can do if you just want to ignore an exception, is you can just uh, uh, enter a pass statement. So you can say try something. And if it doesn't work, just pass, which basically means ignore it, just keep on uh, keep going on. So for example, if I have, um, I don't know, some values in here. And the values are 10, 5, 6, 0, 9, 8, 2. Uh, what I could do is I could say for value in values, print a division, so print 10 divided by whatever value we have here. And in the case of an exception, just pass basically ignore it, and don't print the result, you can see now here we have seven numbers, but we only have six outputs, because this one causes an exception. And since we're just passing, we're just ignoring that we're moving on to the next number. Alternatively, in the loop, you could also say continue if you have some statements. Uh, down here, some other statements that uh, you don't want to execute in the case of an exception, um, you can also go with continue. That is just one thing that you can do. Now, the important thing about this video is here today that you should always be explicit when handling exceptions, because the problem is, uh, let's say uh, we have some exception occurring here that is not a zero division error. Now, maybe I don't know about it, maybe I don't want to catch it, maybe I don't want to handle it, maybe I want to let it crash the program. Uh, maybe I want to treat it differently, maybe I want to at least know about it. But it won't happen if I have this generalized except block here. So the best practice way to handle exceptions is to always be explicit to say, okay, try to do this. What I'm expecting here is a so called zero division error. So I'm going to expect this. Um, I'm going to say accept um, zero division error. And I can also provide um, a name for it as E, for example. And then I can still say pass if I want to this won't change the behavior here. Um, but I can also of course, print the error message. So I can say print the string version of E. And you can see division by zero is printed here the error message uh, of that exception. That is what we could do here. Uh, the important thing now is that if I do something else, so for example, if I try to typecast into an integer, the string hello, this is going to produce an error, it's not a zero division error, it's a value error, because I'm trying to typecast uh, into an integer the word hello, it doesn't contain numbers. So it's not possible to typecast it. Um, since I'm only handling the zero division error, I'm not entering that exception here. Um, I'm still raising the exception, right? So that's one thing I could change this here to a value error. And then if I run this, you can see here, 
that I will get the exception every time because I'm trying to typecast every time. Um, so the best practice ways to handle exceptions explicitly to say I'm waiting for a value error, I'm waiting for this type of error, whatever. And maybe you want to then have a general exception uh, thing at the end. So maybe you want to do okay, except value error, except zero division error, S E do something. And then we want to say, okay, if any other exception is raised, what do we want to do? So we can say except exception as e so the general exception class and you can already see here uh, that it says too broad exception clause this is not something that is recommended and according to the guidelines according to the best practice guidelines what you want to do if you use that broad exception clause is you want to lock the exception so you want to say that is the best practice here you want to say import logging for example and you want to do logging dot exception and then e for example, or you could also add some additional text to it, for example, a timestamp or something. But you want to log the exception, that is the best practice way to do it, you want to say try something, those are the exceptions that I expect. And if anything else happens, if any other error occurs that I'm not listing here, uh, specifically, then it's something that I'm not expecting. Because you know, if I have the situation that I'm dividing numbers by user input, I know that it could be uh, first of all, a string that I cannot typecast. But second of all, it could also be a zero that will lead to a zero division error. So I can have a value error, and I can have a zero division error. But what happens if I don't have those errors? What happens if I get an attribute error? Maybe I'm not expecting that, but it could happen because I overlooked something. And in this case, what I want to do is maybe I want to let the program crash, so not handle this broad exception at all, or at least I want to log it. So that's the best practice way to do it if you want to use that broad exception clause. Um, uh, one other thing is sometimes you want to handle multiple exceptions the same way. So for example, you might want to say, okay, if I get a value error, if I get a zero division error, uh, so let's, for example, say we have here the print 10 divided by value, but I don't only have a zero here, I also have hello in here. Uh, and let's say every time I do integer of value here as well. So for most of the values here, let's just go ahead and print. Uh, let's print value error, zero division error, whatever, and then we lock the rest. What you're going to see here is we get the correct results here, then we get a zero division error, we get results and then the value error, uh, because we handle those differently. Um, in the case of any other exception, we're going to log it, but maybe we're expecting also an attribute error because of something we do. But maybe our way to handle value errors and zero division errors is the same to just continue or to just pass. So in this case, what we can do is we can combine them into a tuple, we can say that the value error, or the zero division error will be handled here, as e, we can delete that and we can just say here pass, for example. Um, and then we can say, okay, if it's an attribute error, as e do something else. So in this case, let's go with continue. And above it, we can say do something else. That is also something that we can do. In this case, a value error and a zero, zero division error will be handled by this block. In this case, we're just going to ignore it, you can see this works. Um, and an attribute error for whatever reason it is raised will be handled here. So we can say print hello world. There you go. And I think we should be able to proactively raise it. Let's go with an attribute error. Uh, there you go, you can see Hello World every time because we're raising it with each iteration. Um, and you can see it enters this block here. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, what else can we do? We can also just raise an exception anyway. And this is something that you sometimes want to do when you say, okay, in the case I get this exception, I might want to do something uh, before I raise the exception, but I want to raise it anyway. So I want to say, uh, let's say I do this division here, and I want to say accept zero division, or let's say, um, accept value error as e, what I want to do is I want to say, raise it anyway. Um, and in the case of a zero division error, I just want to pass. So what you're going to see here is that I'm going to pass for the zero, it tolerates the zero, but it raises anyways, that exception uh, this value error. But before I do that, I can still react to it by doing something. In this case, I'm going to print Hello World. 
this hello world is essentially something that you want to do. So for example, you might uh, notice in a different context, uh, you're waiting for some input output or for some network exception for something related to sockets, for example, when something crashes, you want to react to it, you want to let it crash, you want to erase the exception. But before you do that, before you crash your whole script, you want to close something, you want to write something to a file or anything. Uh, you don't want to just crash, you want to do something before you crash. So that's the way to do that. Um, and then two last things that you probably know about they're quite foundational is the finally statement and the else statement, the finally statement basically just executes every time after a try except block, whatever happens down here will be executed no matter what. So if everything goes right, uh, if we get an exception, whatever happens, we're going to execute this in the end. So no matter if exception or not, we're going to print ABC every time. So you can see ABC is printed, even if there is an exception. Um, and the opposite of the finally or not necessarily the opposite, but the opposite of the except is the else. Else basically means that if there is no exception, we're going to run the code here. So print no exception. There you go, we're going to print no exception, no exception, no exception, no exception, no exception. And then we get this hello world here, which is the value error. And we don't get no exception because there was an exception. So it was raised. And because of that, we're not going to print that. So this is how you do professional exception handling in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.